Welcome back, you lovely people. This is my second video of three. So there's one very long car video before this. And there's a bike video coming after. So make sure you've liked, subscribed, and rung that bell. This is for our Saturday, December the 9th sale here at Manor Park Classic. So if you're watching it good and early because you're clever, you've still got two days to view, two days to go online and go through all the lots. Don't forget to register to bid at manorparkclassics.com. Onwards, immediately, with this beautiful little thing, 1932 Austin 7 Saloon, very pretty, very presentable, and very usable. If you aren't familiar with this 30 stuff, Austin 7's, of course, was our big seller. Ford had the Model T, Austin had the 7, and it really did mobilize Britain. It gave us a car that we could all afford, and the average person, the idea was, the philosophy was, a big car made little. That was the 7. And if you look, and the engine's open for you to have a look inside, they're just really accessible. What's nice about this 30 stuff is it's relatively usable. You don't want to be flying up and down the motorway in it, but certainly driving to car shows and pubs and shops and just giving the kids an absolute giggle taking them out for a drive. They are exceptional at that. Wonderful owners club, very good spares back up on these. And what's lovely about this 30 stuff, because the market is softening, you can have a lot of fun with a car that you can tinker, get yourself an old fashioned Imperial and Whitworth socket set. You can spend all of your Sundays just in there doing all your bits and pieces. Great car, that will be three and a half to four and a half grand. It's done 8,000 miles on the Odo, so I imagine it's gone round. It's MOT exempt. It's just lovely. Loads of receipts, loads of invoices, loads of old MOTs. You don't have to MOT it now. I would always advise you to MOT a classic car, but you don't have to. And can you think, for three and a half to four and a half grand, it doesn't take up much garage space, but it will occupy a huge space in your heart. That's really fun, a lot of fun. Triumph Stags, I love them. Michelotti styling, really nice looking convertible. This is a very nice one. This is a 1974, had an engine rebuild in 2020 to the tune of 4,600 pounds. Now I see and read a, a lot of rubbish about the original Triumph Stag engine. A lot of people used to, in the old days, refit the Rover V8 because they had a lot of reliability problems with the original Stag engine. Actually, that was because when they were made, the tolerances weren't great, the coolants of the time weren't great, the way the cars were maintained in period weren't great. But fast forward to the present day when all of those issues have been solved and you get a nice one with a rebuilt engine like this and look after it and run it on good coolant and good oil, you'll never have a, a whiff of problem. They're actually a really good, reliable car. It was driven here, as I say, correct Triumph engine in this one. It had a recent gearbox gasket and fluid refresh to the thumb of to the thumb, to the sum of 1371. Say so bodywork restoration in the 1990s and it's sitting very well in that too. It's a really nice car, very pretty car that one. Just a lot of good news. So the engine bay was stripped back to bare metal and resprayed while that engine was out too. So not only do you have a really nice engine, but you've got a very nice engine bay. And you could buy that car for between nine and 11 grand. And I think every summer day would just be an absolute joy, wouldn't it? I can't see whether it's got the hard top or not. I guess it probably has, but let's have a look. It doesn't say in the listing. I will check that one for you. But yeah, what a lovely car for not a huge amount of money. Other fun cars, we've seen this one before, and I can't believe it's not found a home. The Tequila Sunrise Granada, as we call it here. This is beautiful, isn't it? Not only a very nice car, but in a very rare color. This is a 1983 Ford Granada, 2.8 gear estate. So lots of lovely things to love there. The definition of a practical, usable classic, because come and look at the here, Elliot. Come look from this side. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, this is a big car now today. So imagine how big it must have been in the 1980s. So the family car of the 80s, room for five, plus your dog. And when we're talking about an estate car boot, if I open this up so Elliot can see inside, or just shoot through that door, Elliot, look at that. Look how much boot space you've got there. Now, this car has a 95,000. It is predominantly original paint. And because of that, it has faded in the most beautiful way. And I adore the way that it's patinated. So all of this top pigment has actually sun faded, if you look. Because it hasn't so much on the side, you've almost got this incredible fade job that in the 1970s, somebody would have paid a custom car painter to do. And it would have been really hard to achieve. But the sun has done this for you. So you've got lovely faded top, lovely deep red pink on the side. You can see she's bubbling up a little bit. She will at some point need a bit of bodywork, I would have thought, to keep her in this lovely condition. But the sunroof opens and slides well. All of the places where they rock around the roof, this one hasn't. And apart from a few blebs and cauliflowers, it's actually a really sound little car, this one. It's had recent maintenance and service. It looks very, very original, this car. I don't think it's had a lot of remedial work in terms of body or welding. It's very, very nice indeed. It's done 95,000, as I've said. The colour is phenomenal. And we've estimated that five and a half to six and a half. So the reserve on that one has come down since the last sale. So if you do want one, and they are a rare old bus now in probably the rarest and nicest colour they did, 
there's your car. Now, do you remember, my friends, when one of these was on every street corner? So this is, you've probably guessed by the colour, an old BT van, when BT went grey, do you remember? But isn't this nice? I don't know who looked after this, because normally when you see BT vans, they were absolutely ragged and not looked after. I'm guessing whoever was assigned this van really looked after it because it's gorgeous. 1997 Ford Escort 55 1.8 diesel van, formerly owned by BT, so it's got that provenance with it as well. It's the 96,000 miles, which as you know, is not a lot for a van. And it must have had quite an easy life, you know. So original Ford handbook pack on this one as well. Great service history because BT do look after their vans because obviously they're work tools. Very rare and unusual to see a nice Ford Escort van in any condition. And this one's particularly nice. And why I like this, you've got that history, it's that bit of street furniture that used to be everywhere and suddenly they've all gone. But you can either have this for your Ford collection or your commercial vehicle collection. But why I really like it, it's just still a great van. It's still a really usable van. A mate of mine who's a Valeter used to have one of these up until very recently and they are perfect little vans. Quite small, quite compact, very easy and cheap to run, being a 1.8 diesel as well. Got all its roof rack, that all comes with it as well. Four to five grand you could buy that for. Put that into the context of what new vans are and how expensive they are now. A little bit cool, bit of a talking point. If you use that for your business, which you could, that's a really usable, sensible van that won't cost a fortune to run. Get it signed, written up. Just a very fun thing and a very usable, very practical thing. Now this is a, a little bit special. Everyone knows I love a Range Rover. This is a good car because have a look at it. You're probably thinking, oh yeah, like a suffix A Range Rover. It looks like that, doesn't it? This is actually surprisingly late. This is an 87 Range Rover that's kind of been backdated. Now there are companies doing that uh, in London in particular, charging enormous amounts of money, many, many tens of thousands of pounds to do that. You could buy almost the real deal. And I think in a beautifully patinated, backdated style. So we've got the earlier bumpers on, we've got the earlier trim. As I say, this looks probably 20 years uh, or at least 10 years older than it is. It needs a little bit of light restoration. It starts, runs, drives and stops. It's got the three and a half litre V8 and it's a manual. It was imported into the UK in 2007 and converted into right-hand drive. And I'll just say, let me open the door for Elliot so he can see. It was done very, very well. well. Actually, the window's open. Have a look inside there, guys. So with all the correct dash, everything's ready to go. It's got a little bit scruffy on the seat look. But the bodywork, guys, is very, very good. All the channels, I mean, if you can just shoot down this roof rail, have a look in there, guys. Look how beautiful all that is in there. Tailgate's pretty decent as well. In all the places where Range Rovers go, this one has not gone. And you know, basically, what they look like, the early ones, the suffix A stuff has got really expensive now, not least driven by the fact that all these backdate companies are really driving the prices up. So you could buy this car and we've estimated this at a very sensible five to six thousand pounds. It's got a super, super shell. It's a very good right hand drive conversion and all the basics are there for you to put that back on the road. I'd imagine quite cheaply. It's not registered in the UK. It's still registered in France. There's a bit of paperwork to do. That's really easy. I can explain that or any of the guys here can explain how to do that. It's a lot easier than you think. So don't be put off by that. That is potentially, to me, the bargain of the sale and potentially one of the coolest cars per pound we are selling this Saturday. So if you fancy a very light restoration, stress that there's not much to do at all, there's a great project for you. We like the weird and the wonderful here at Manor Park Classics. I think this qualifies as both of those things. Again, a great commercial vehicle that you could use as your daily or use for your business. How about this, 1998 Smiley Face Transit. Not many of them on the road anymore, not any that aren't completely hammered. So this is a flare side. So the, why I love the flare side so much, it's a pickup. We didn't get many flare sides over here. You don't see them very often, but you get this really cool American style flare side pickup bed. It's done 156,000 miles, which anyone who knows a transit knows. It's not even halfway there. Interior is really quite decent. Look, little pull and a hole on the seat but it wouldn't take much to make this nice. So at the end of the day, you've got to think what you're going to use it for. It's had a little bit of paint on the arches look, but the bodywork is really, really good. It's had a repaint at some point. It's a tiny bit blistery, but it is what it is. It's a bit of fun. Again, you could use this for work. This would make an absolutely hilarious daily. Who knows what business you've got? Maybe you've got motorsport. You could tell your race car, chuck all your spares in the back. You might be the coolest landscape gardener in your town. Here's your truck. Very interesting, semi-customised, lots of nice little bits and pieces. And there aren't many of these about. That's the other thing. There's 43 of these smiley transit flare sides left. Just have it as a weird and wonderful daily. Have it as a working vehicle. Either way, three to four grand, it's not going to break the bank. Again, 
put that against a full-size pickup of any type and see how much that's going to cost you, surely the money is going to be better and cheaper in that. All right, cheap holidays. Don't know where you're going on holiday next year, but how about this? If you're on a cheap holiday, this is hilarious. I'm going to open at the back and show you. A Bedford Rascal Bambi. That's what this is. 1987, very rare, loads of fun. 29,000 miles. So start with the front, it's a diminutive little cab. So you walk around here and you've got all the things you need for your holiday away. There you go, look. Plenty of room. I fit in there, believe it or not. It's got all the amenities that you want. It was originally from Stuart Longton Caravans and it has been enjoyed many, many times. It's quite tidy, it's very straight. You've got a little tiny dent that you get in a big high-sided vehicle and it's had some paint at some point but it's really fun. So look at that. So you've got that. It's a tiny little thing. It doesn't take up much room on the road. But then come through to the back. Look at this. Look at this. Talk about small but perfectly formed. You've got your sink and washroom there, look. You've got obviously your settees that turn into beds. Loads of paperwork. You've got bed at the front. Isn't that awesome? So if you have big holiday aspirations and a tiny driveway, this is your camper van. Look, little cooker on that side. Isn't it brilliantly packaged? Got your main hook up there as well. I think that could be a lot of fun. I think somebody needs to buy that and take it to Le Mans. That's a bit of a joke. But three to four grand, that's the thing. You could spend that on a rubbish week in Spain that you'll never see again, or buy this for three or four grand, have a holiday every weekend. And you know, so, somewhere nice, go to the park, brew up a tea, a lot of fun. This is great, only for the brave, this one. Genuine barn find. Jaguar XJS, 1989 XJS 5.3 coupe, one owner, genuine 39,000 miles, and we've left it in its authentic barn fine dirt because we know you love that kind of thing. One private owner, originally owned by Henleys. It does need a bit of bodywork, guys, if you look around. She's a little bit crusty and rusty in places. So if you are buying this by knowing two things, one, that the mileage is low and genuine. Secondly, that this kit it's correct and real, but XARS kit, well sure designed, and that you are going to have to put some money into getting the bodywork perfect. You can see everywhere you look, there's little bits and pieces. So it will not be a huge amount of money, this. It's a huge amount of car, but it won't be a huge amount of money. The door's a bit sticky. There you go. Good job, I'm so manly and strong. The interior is actually really nice. So I think you have the bones of a really quite decent car here. You can see something's fallen against this rear wing. So that's going to need a little bit of a whack out to do that. But although it's a bit crusty and there are holes in all the places where Jaguars go, it's not massive and it's not structural. If you look all around here, it's just starting to bubble up. So I think you could save that, and I've certainly saved worse cars than that. And it would be nice to see it back on the road, not least of all because of the mileage. So a nice 5.3 manual, it's got MOT certificates dating back to 1991. The original bill is stale. It's got the original service book with all the stamps in there too. Several of else is there, four and a half thousand miles on the clock in 1990 and was sold for 33,000 pounds. And this was actually option with a TWR kit from new. So this was a, a standard car with a TWR kit put on. That's no reserve. You tell me what you think that's worth. I think that could be potentially a fabulous project for someone. It's gonna cost you a few thousand pounds to make a nice car out of it, but a genuine TWR kit, genuine 39,000 miles, lots of bodywork to be had, lots of bills to be had, but ultimately, what a wonderful way to travel. Right, Starship mileage, 1990, Mercedes, 300TE, 24 valve. I think probably the only car you'll ever need for the rest of your life, this car. So this is 182,000 miles, but full disclaimer, the speedo stopped working a while ago, so the mileage could be anything from 182,000 to 220,000. We don't know, it's a Mercedes, it hides its mileage very well. So. Just assume the mileage is completely made up and probably somewhere in the low 200s, I'd imagine. Unbelievable specification, which we'll go into in a minute. Low ownership. It's had very little use recently. It's got all its original handbooks, but can I talk you through whoever optioned this car? Look at this. These are all the option codes on this car. We're going to go through a few of them. So automatic, yeah, seats, blah, blah. Sports seats, it's got. It's got the electric siding roof. It's got the temper stat. It's got all the... So that's the sexy paintwork, it's got the air conditioning, heat insulated glass, sport chassis on this as well, cargo anchorage, wood trim. Someone has optioned this to the eyes, guys, back in the day. And don't be worried by the mileage. I mean, look at the seats for one. 
Talk about a car that was designed to do interstellar mileage. But the main thing is, it's been looked after, it's been cared for, and it's been maintained. And Mercedes that are, particularly this era of Mercedes, when they were making them so well, these can do half a million miles. I've been in a taxi in Stuttgart, one of these, back in the day, with 680,000 miles on it. So this, at 200 odd, it's a third of the way through. They'll last forever if you look after them. They are ultimately classless. She's a fine old bus. She needs a little bit of love bodily. You can just see here, stone chips that have gone over on the top of the screen. So you want to do a little bit of body work. Or do you, you know, just buy it for the inexpensive car it is. Tool around in a truly classless motor car. We've estimated it between four and 5,000 pounds. I love them. Anyone from an antique dealer to Lord or Lady of the Manor to landed gentry has driven and owned one of these. And with good reason, because just a brilliant old bus. One of my favorites, Subaru Impreza. So this is a very, very late. So this is the last of the GC8, the last of the classic shapes. WRX STI, Japanese import with 165,000 kilometers, so about 100,000 miles on this. Pretty rare in this spec and very groovy. So it's the STI, so it's the bigger engine. It's got some nice bits on it. Like all Subarus of this era, just get a few things like they start to ruche on the doors a little bit there, if you can look from the heat that he's doing. Probably could do the little detail on the inside, but all the ingredients are there. It's got OZs on, which is a very nice upgrade. A few little bit of bits of paint to do, a little bit on the back bumper there you can see. Somebody's taken off the STI wing and put this much more subtle carbon lip on. You can actually see where the original holes are there. If you were being period correct pure, you should maybe put the original wing back on. If you've never driven one of these classic Impressors, particularly an STI, they are phenomenal. 280 horsepower very very quick very tractable and starting to go up in value because if you look at the top of this market the 22b is the poster child of the gc8 shape the best ones of those are fetching half a million pounds now believe it or not that's dragging up the prices of p1s and type r's which is the two-door cars a good p1 could be 70 or 80 thousand pounds now and what that means for the four-door which of course was the car that originally they rallied they are starting to come up too so these are very good news in nice condition and this one's quite nice on the body with that paint being done but at the moment, you can buy a car like this. This is 10 to 12. I don't think it will stay that way for long. And if you tidy that one up, I do think there's money to be made. I don't think it will be long before these are 20-odd grand cars because look at every other rally car from the 1990s. Escort Cosworth, Tommy Mackinnon. Look at the prices of those cars. They start at 50, 60. In the case of really nice Mackinnons, they can be nearly 100 grand. So that at 10 to 12, as a genuine WRC car from the 1990s, bargain. Get one while they're cheap. This is fun. Fast forwards are always fun. You can't afford a Focus RS because they're very expensive now. How about a nice Focus ST? So you've got a lot of the same ingredients of the Focus RS. Beautiful three-door body shell. I do think this is one of the most handsome Focus models they ever did as a two-door. You've got that lovely 2.55 pot. It's an ST2, appreciating classic, and it's a really nice point, this car. Because it's an ST, not an RS, because it's a slightly higher mileage, 79,000, it's manual, it's not going to be an expensive car. This is a great way, if you want to enjoy a modern fast forward and you don't want to pay RS tax, a nice, slightly higher mileage ST, I think is a very good way to do it. What's nice about this as well, it doesn't appear to have been massively tuned or modified, which again, is quite hard to find. To find one of these completely unmodded is very unusual because they were quite a price range car, particularly when second hand, everybody put exhaust, springs, wheels, not that there's anything wrong with that, it's my favorite thing to do. But I think if you want to buy one that's going to hold its money, this is the spec you want. And this is estimated at four and a half to five and a half grand. And if you've not driven one of these, Ford was so on it with this car. The dynamics, the chassis, the handling, everything about these cars was impeccable. They really were leading the market at this point. And even in standard form, it's a quick car and you can remap them to just ridiculous figures. But for that money, usable, certainly I think an investable car at sort of four and a half, five and a half grand. I think you would nick it at that. And look inside, you've got Recaro seats. It's a great thing. It really is a great thing. It's pretty decent on the body as well. The paint's very nice. You could certainly make it a little bit better, but what a fun way to travel. And have a look what RS prices are for RS three doors and have a look at that. As I say, five and a half grand might take you that home. It just seemed like a bit of a bargain, don't you think? Very, very nice. Now, another way of getting your hot hatch fix, rare car this, this is a 2002 Volkswagen Golf V6 four motion. So almost a golf impreza. So there you've got your four wheel drive, you've got your V6 and best bit, 
it's a manual. This is a really weird spec, but I absolutely adore it because you've got a three door, so you've got sports shell, you've got wood trim and tan leather, which I think is really nice, very kind of executive and premium. But V6, it makes all the right noises, and the manual, can't be many or any of those for sale. Five former keepers on this, original spec, full leather, matching A1s, heated seats as well. 16 stamps in the book. This is indigo blue, two sets of keys, three and a half to four and a half grand. You've got the, uh, the R8 copy wheels on, which I quite like. To me, I'd put that on a slightly smaller wheel. And what a great car. Really nice on the body as well, very nice paint. Again, tiny little bit swirly, a little polish to bring that back. A light tint on the back window. But find me another V6 manual for Motion Golf. There's just none. I don't think they sold any because that was a very, very expensive alternative to a GTI, but a very cheap version of getting an R32. So have a think about that. Three and a half to four and a half grand. Oh, then that, apart from the 99 in the previous video, this could be my other favorite car of the sale just because they never come up for sale in any condition. The ones that do come up for sale are generally rusty and knackered. And this is neither of those things. This is, in case you haven't noticed, talking about rare rally car homologation cars, Mazda 323 Turbo 4x4. If you are a collector of rare and weird Japanese cars, which I certainly am, you will want this in your collection. So five former keepers, current owner for six years, he's done 66,000 miles, six of these left. Now these team dynamics you may love or may not love. If you're a purist, you say put the original wheels back on. And to make that easy for you, what the previous owner has done, look, he's put them in the boot for you. There you go. So there's the wheels that will make it super valuable and collectible. So my advice would be put those back on, put your team dynamics on eBay, get some good money for those. But look inside, guys. Come and look at the condition of the interior. 66,000 miles, which I would wager is very genuine, looking at the condition of this. Now, Mazda did rally these. These were a genuine rally car. And we know the rules. If it was homologation, if the factory rallied them, if they had any whiff of competition history, authentic competition history, chances are the values will go up. I think that is one of those cars. Just exceptionally cool. Now it's not gonna be cheap because they never come up for sale. As I say, the ones that do are normally knackered and this is neither of those things. Eight to nine grand. If you're a Mazda collector, a Mazda main dealer, you need this. You need this in the showroom. Hardly anything to do. The body works really quite decent. Whack those wheels on, give them a refurb. You've got a mega little thing and a wonderful piece of Mazda history that no one else will have. Yes, eight to nine grand. If you buy that, you are my hero. You really are. Lovely little GT6, really nice price range this. This is a 1972 overdrive model, 94,000. MOT exempt, of course, as well. You know what I say, always MOT them, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Let me open the door. It's got very, very nice interior. Looks like somebody's had a retrim in there. So it's got optional rear seats, which they didn't all have. It's got the five and a half J wheels. History file going all the way back to 1987. It's just had those seats retrimmed, which is why they look so nice. Nice little mounting wheel in there as well. It's got AccuSpark electronic ignition, really nice upgrade to make it a bit more usable. Ever so nice on the body, I have to say. Very nice on the body. Some spares in the back, which we always like to see. And these can be very expensive restored. We've obviously got the GT6 in there that's had a mega restoration. This would be less than half of that. This is eight and a half to nine and a half grand. It's British racing green. It's got all the right bits. And those five and a half, those wider wheels, they do sit really well on those. They've got a really nice squat stance. And if you think of it, I, I always think of the GT6 as kind of like a cost-effective E-type. Got that lovely British design, beautiful shape, six cylinder engine, lovely coupe body shell. But as I say, eight and a half to nine and a half grand. You could own that. Moving on to this, I think this is perhaps the most charming car in the sale. And I, I love this car because it's very price rangey for one. So 1948 Citroen Traction Avant, one of the cars most ahead of its time, front wheel drive, of course. And what I particularly like about this is it's a really level car, left-hand drive, imported car, came from France in 2016. So I think it's had the benefit of a very blessed existence in a much warmer and drier climate than ours. It was restored and recommissioned by our vendor in 2016 as it came over from France. And if you would like to see inside, well, I think these are out of another Citroen. This makes me laugh. The only thing I would change on this car if it was mine, I really like this seat. This is a later seat out of a modern car. I would just take these side plastics off to hide the fact that it's a new seat. But what's nice about this car is it's been made to use and enjoy because the amazing thing about the Traction Avant is they're actually quite drivable. Even by modern standards, if you've not driven an old car before, 
These drive more like something out of the 60s or 70s than out of the 40s. They're surprisingly easy to live with. So this one has been converted to indicators, which is quite a good idea. So these are not standard, but it starts people pulling out in front of you. And it's just been cherished and used. So if it was mine, as I say, I'd probably strip those little plastic side trims off to make the seats look older. I'd give the paint a good mop and polish because I think it will come up very well indeed. It's got new Michelins on. But why this car is adorable, guys, apart from the fact that it's very usable and it's a great example of one to have fun with, you know, you've got a little bit of patination everywhere, but that to me just all adds to the charm. This car is going to be between eight and ten thousand pounds. It's not going to be a huge amount of money, but it's a huge amount of style. Just stand here, Ellie. Just get this front three quarters. Look at that. I mean, there's a reason these get used in so many adverts of the time. There's a reason these get cast in so many films as the car because they're just stunningly beautiful. This is when Citroen were at the top of their styling game. I don't really think they've ever made a car quite so elegant. Everyone goes on about the DS, but I think the Traction Avant is actually a car that massively punches above its weight. And this period of stuff isn't expensive. 40s cars at the moment aren't massively expensive. But as I say, you get the look of a 40s car with the drive of a 60s car. That's the beauty of a Traction Avant. They're very, very easy to drive, even if you've never had a classic car before. Moving on to this. Drink it in, guys. Astra GTE 16 valve. Oh, yes. And what do we want your Astro GT 16 valve to have? Digi-Dash. This is a Digi-Dash, it's ticking all the boxes. Really nice car, 70,000 manual. It's just had a full service. The brakes have been checked, the alloy wheels have been refurbished last year. It's very smart. Let's have a look at the interior. The interior is very nice as well. Little bit of a seat bolster wear, as you'd kind of expect, which tells me that I would suggest that's an original seat, not retrimmed. You can't see it, it's not illuminated, but go online and look at the Digi-Dash. If you're not familiar, with the Astra GTE. They look great with a standard dash, but the Digi Dash just raises it, raises the value as well, raises the desirability. It's got a nice set of Pirellis on. It passed its last MOT with no advisories, and it really is very nice, guys. There's a little bit of micro blistering on the bonnet, tiny, tiny bit. A couple of very minor paint imperfections again. And please, you know, don't forget guys, this is all I've done my whole life is, is buy cars. I am super picky. With the greatest of respect to all of you, you may not even notice some of this stuff, but I need to point it out so that you're buying in uh, open eyes. So yeah, tiny bit of micro blistering, get that sorted. And as you can see, it presents beautifully. Very collectible, very interesting car. And the price of these fast Vauxhalls is, it's never going to catch the fast forwards, but they are getting much more market interest. They are becoming much more desirable. Nine to 11 could buy you that. If you compare that to a fast forward of the same era, you'll see that is a bit of a bargain. I like that car very much indeed. Moving on, another Impreza. So a classic Impreza on later STI wheels. Very, very nice car. It's got turbo timer on it as well. 1994, so it's an early one. Very early one, this one. It's a WRX, so it's a JDM Japanese domestic market import. It's had a lot of money spent. It had a recent 5,600 pound refresh at a Mark Specialist. The Cherish plate comes with it. It's dyno at 304, which is interesting because the car would have been 245 a standard, so I would imagine it's running some nice performance mods. This is not standard for 94. This is an STI version 6 rear wing off a later car, but I think it looks rather nice on there. It's had a new clutch and a gearbox rebuilt just 2,000 miles ago, and the car is showing 126,000 kilometers, I guess, but assume it's miles. But clearly, if you look inside, it's had some money spent. It's very nice. That Subaru number plate comes with it. It's got an upgraded exhaust on there as well, but not an expensive car. Remember everything I said about 90s rally cars. Look at Evo prices. Look at Escort Cosworth prices. Look at everything else that it rallied against in period. All of those cars are 50, 60, 70,000 pounds. For a while, I think you'll be able to buy a Subaru Impreza for less than that. But I do stress for a while. I think all of us that have got one of these tucked away at sensible figures in five, 10 years time, We'll be laughing. And all of those five, 10 years, you've got a lovely car to drive. And nice tasteful mods on this. It's got the STI front lip, which is a very nice. It's got a front mount intercooler, again, which is not standard. Not a purist car, but certainly, I think, a lovely basis. And again, these wheels are off the later Bug Eye STI. So it's an OE wheel off a different car, but I think it works really well. Looks really, really good, I think. Another hot hatch, we've got all the performance cars for you in this sale, particularly at really nice price ranges as well. 2005 Volkswagen Golf R32, really nice collectible car, best colour they did for this car, 92,000. 
and automatic. And why I love the R32 so much, very tunable, great daily, really great daily, not the best on the fuel, but what a wonderful way to travel. And particularly with automatic, just a lovely way to travel. Japanese supply car, and as we know, cars that go to Japan have less underbody corrosion than those that come to the UK. It's been converted to a UK bumper, so it looks like a UK car. What a lovely thing. Original Japanese book pack, very nice interior and very low wear on that driver's seat. And the mileage is 92,000, so I would suggest with a higher mileage, this has had quite an easy life because it looks really, really good. Paintwork is very nice. A few very light swirls, but really nothing to write home about there. Again, headlights look good, bumpers are good. What a pretty car that is. These are fast, not just fast for the time, but fast by modern standards. And we've estimated that at eight to nine grand. If you're looking for a reliable, quick car that's practical because it's a five door, you can put the kids in the back, you can put the shopping in it. I've got a lot of love for the R32. And I particularly think that Mark V's are just cracking looking thing. Really lovely thing. R32, there you go. Eight to nine buys you that. Onto one of my favorite cars at the moment, an MGB GT. What happens when you let Pininfarina restyle your Roadster and give you a very nice coupe? This is an interesting car because you'll see it's a 79 on a T, but yet it's chrome bumpers, which of course disappeared in 1974. So the clever one amongst you will notice this has been backdated. So this is a, let me find, 1979, 7,000 pounds spent on restoration in 2020. So it's got overdrive, which is very good. So the chrome bumper conversion, that's been done very, very well. It's got a squeaky door. We're throwing that in for free. And lots of bills, lots of bills. What I would say about this car, it's very nice, very level. It needs that door adjusting. The only thing I would say, the paint is okay. It's not perfect. So I think it's had a paint job to a price, to be fair. So it presents very well. If you're looking for a car to add value to, to enjoy something that you can sort of cherish and have some fun with, it's perfect. You will, if you are a purist and you're looking for an absolutely concourse car, there were some slight imperfections here that you could certainly sort and make a really nice car out of. But then we've reflected that in the price for what a beautiful car it is. And the mileage is just 6,000 since the restoration. This car is up between six and seven. So it's a very, very price range, very nicely priced car. And what a color, beautiful color change, beautiful back date, a proper rifle and a really nice way to drive. You'll never go wrong with an MGB. I've just put a video on YouTube about why the MGB is such a great car. So have a look for that and you can get spares for them, they're fun to drive, they're easy to drive, and everybody can look after them. Wonderful thing. This is very nice. 1992 Escort Cabriolet that's been in long-term storage. Now it's funny, isn't it, because the Mark V has always been relatively unloved in anything other than Cosworth form, but funnily enough, that's starting to change. People are realizing, I think, it's actually a very handsome car. And what's particularly nice about this one is I don't know who's had it or where it's been stored, but they've really looked after it. The paintwork is lovely on this. It's done 57,000 miles, it's a manual car. And I just think what once was the ugly duckling is now starting to come into its own. And actually, for a bit of cheap summer fun, just for tooling around and driving to car shows, you do a lot worse than that. Presents really well, it's got the original radio cassette, which is always a very good look. The dealer book packs and some nice bills with it. It's got these great RS Accessory 7 spokes, which every Ford should have by law, I think. It's very cool, very, very cool. It was registered in Coventry in 1992. And it's been here for a lot of its life and over to Northern Ireland, but it's been in long-term storage for 15 years. It's been recommissioned fully now, but that's why it looks so nice. It's not seen road salt. It's not seen winters. And you could buy that car between four and 5,000 pounds. I think if you're looking for a cheap, nice, fun Ford, and I can't say this enough, the bodywork is really, really good. And black is a hideous color for showing scratches and marks and chips. And I can't really see any. So I would say, come and have a good look at that. It's very straight and level, particularly nice condition and the wheels absolutely make it. Smashing car, love a TR7, TR7 with a V8, possibly one of the most fun things ever. I'm a huge fan of Harris Mann and all of his designs. I think the TR7 was a work of genius. So a very Marmite car, not to everyone's taste, I know that. But I'm one of the big fans. This is great. So a TR7 convertible, stage two Robo V8 conversion by s, &S Preparations. So it's got 907 miles on the Odo, which I'd imagine is either a reset or it's going around the clock. Poseidon green, which is a wonderful color, gold wheels, tax exempt, MOT exempt, and you're driving with the burble of a V8 as well. 
So the only advisory was slight corrosion on the sills, which are now clean back and wax oil, so that's been done. It's got a larger radiator, four branch manifold. So imagine how this sounds, guys. It's got full stainless exhaust as well on it. From a collection, it was recommissioned in 2021, and it's only had 907 miles since a full recommission in the last 13 years when it had a speedo change. There you go. So it's actually about 109,000 miles in total, but obviously with lots of money spent. So you've got a TR7, again, a car that's got a good rally heritage, really nice on the body, wonderful color, and it's got a V8 with a big manifold and a stainless steel exhaust. So I think you and I both know that is gonna sound absolutely mega. So a lot of fun and a great car for summer. Another great car for summer, very price ranging, very much a lot of fun this one, Jaguar XK8. Now I had a wonderful day the other day driving down at the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust where I was lucky enough to drive the Jaguar XK from Die Another Day, which of course is the same shape as this with a Gatling machine gun on the back. Now you can't buy that one, that's in the museum, but you can buy something that looks very similar to it. 2003, 4.2, well-maintained, unabused, lovely little car, slightly higher mileage, 121,000. But if you look at the interior, come and have a look at this. That does not look like 121,000 mile interior. It's a little bit of bolster wear, but the leather's very much there. You could have that recolored for not a lot of money and make it look very nice. So original book pack, stamp service book, just had a fresh MOT, nice low own account. I just said level thing. What I like about this, you know, and you won't believe this from me, it's got, the, it's got the baby wheels. If you look at the XK behind with the larger wheels, so these are tiny, tiny wheels on this and the ride on these, nobody optioned these, everybody went for the bigger wheel. But all the chassis engineers will tell you, you have the big balloon tire on the ride of this, the waftiness of this car has to be experienced. But are you ready for this? 121,000 miles, great history, good MOTs as well, original book pack plus stamp service book, going all the way back to 2017, two keys, two fobs, three and a half to four and a half grand. I am struggling to think of a more fun way to drive about or a more stylish way to drive about. So that's estimated at less than the Escort. <laughs> good value these old jags aren't they they really are and again just get a good specialist and somebody will keep that in fine fettle for you a little bit more money xk8 4.2 2003 but we're no reserve this one 91,000 automatic lovely color combination the dark blue and the tan and again very very nice on the seat this one that number plate stays with it that short number plate and a low owner car not going to be huge amounts of money at all and it's i say a no reserve car so you get to tell us what you think it's worth Paint works pretty decent, a little bit swirly, but very nice. So nothing that your detailer or valeter couldn't get to a very nice condition for you. But I do think these, and if you, particularly if you come and shoot them from the front here, Elliot, just look at the styling of that. The whole point of this, they were trying to hark back on the front of these to the E-type, if you look. And particularly in that color, you can really see it. So that won't be a dissimilar price. It's gonna be low figure thousands. And I just struggle. I think these, these will never be as cheap again. And they really are quite a lovely usable car. That's fabulous. I might even have a cheeky bit on that myself. Moving over, other fun convertibles. So many silver convertibles in this room. 2003, BMW 325CI Sport convertible. Just a great car, E46 is a mega spec. This one's manual as well, which I've got an awful lot of time for. 130,000 manual. The German national racing colour, the black interior, just good news. It's had a slight bit of paint on the top there. So this has had some paint. And if I'm being brutal honest with you, you could probably do with that top bit just blowing in again. So it's good on the paint. The wheels aren't bad, probably, again, if we're being pedantic, don't forget this is a very much a price range car. There's a few little bits and pieces to do, but aren't E46 is the most beautiful car and I think really wearing very well in terms of how they're aging. This car will be somewhere between three and four thousand pounds. It's not a huge amount of money. So either enjoy it as it is or gently refine it. As I say, tiny bit of paint work to do. If you're a purist, you want it to be absolutely perfect. But in the meantime, enjoy it, soak up the rays and have some fun behind a very nice engine on that one. Back over here, we're making you run around. When was the last time you saw one of these? This was a lot of people's dream car. If you were any kind of salesperson representative in the 80s or 90s, or if you were a touring car fan, and I really was a touring car fan, and John Clennon was my hero, this was probably one of the cars that you aspire to own. 1989 Cavalier SRI, your chance to be John Clennon. It's even in white, look, it's ready for you. 114,000 miles, manual car, 
and an MOT till July 2024 with no advisories at all. Very nice, actually. Sunroof model as well with headlight wipers. Do you know what I like about this, guys? I like the fact it's on trims. You could option a wheel on this, but this one's still on its very, very rare factory dealer trims. And that is not going to be a huge amount of money, that one, I wouldn't have thought. We've estimated it at five and a half to six and a half grand. Again, genuine touring car credentials on this, in white, super rare model, something that means a lot to a lot of people. A lot of people dreamt of owning an SRI. Just mega. Look at it, they're just, I think, again, they've aged really well. I think the Cavalier, I thought it was a very good looking car in period. I would like to own that. I'm very much getting into my 80s and 90s saloon period at the moment. It is a very pretty thing that, and it's in lovely condition. I say five and a half, six and a half grand is the estimate on that. A lot of love for this. Moving across to this. Our two favorite words in the auction catalog, no reserve, the Audi 3.2 Quattro. Again, future classic for sure. A car to tuck away, but enjoy in the meantime. This is the 97,000 miles, no reserve car, automatic, Quattro. It's ticking all the boxes, big engine, four wheel drive. It's got the big spoiler on the back as well. Presents very well, it's been part of a collection. It's certainly a future classic. I actually even quite like the TSWs. I think they sort of make it actually. And as I say, it's got 97,000 miles showing. Good history on the car as well. It's fun, isn't it? I keep talking about usable classics, cars that you can if you want to keep as a classic for high days and holidays or maybe use as an alternative to an expensive lease car. Why spend three, four, five hundred pounds a month on a car that you'll never own when you could buy a classic for a few thousand pounds and use that every day instead and probably have depreciation proof motoring. I think this is very much one of those cars. It's Quattro. You can drive it all through the winter and even if you lose a little bit of money on it, it's still cheaper than a lease. Worth your consideration, I think. Now this, SLs, you cannot go wrong with an SL. There's a reason there's always a buoyant market for these, and they're basically style and quality. SL will never not be wanted, and they're so beautifully made. The 1980s when Mercedes were very much building cars up to a quality rather than down to a price, and this is the epitome of that philosophy, really. 90,000 miles, it's a 300, so again, the sweet spot. Not the biggest engine, not the smallest engine, so it Shovels quite nicely, thank you very much, but doesn't cost a fortune to run. Drives and presents very well, UK supplied right hand drive example, with a very pleasing colour combination, and I'll agree with that. Original stamp service book and offered with both hard and soft tops, which the team tell me are in lovely condition. Now, this is nice, this is very level on the body, very nice on the interior. So, because of that, it's going to cost you a little bit more money. This is going to be 19 to 21,000 pounds. Now, I am being a complete pedant here, and this hard top which is in very nice condition, is a slightly different shade to the body. It actually works really well. It's like a two-tone. I don't know if that's an intentional thing or whether that was repainted at a different time. So do understand that if you're buying remotely. The hot top is in lovely condition. It is probably two shades out from the body. It actually works. It looks like a two-tone car. But just to let you know, if you're buying and you can't see on your screen resolution. Over to this. Now this is um, a fixer-upper, this one. Needs a little bit of work to make it perfect. There's a bit of a dent in the door. We know Chris Bangle, when he styled this, did put some creases in, but if you look on the passenger door, there's a crease that Chris Bangle didn't quite design. <laughs> this one's not his. There's a little, little tiny scuff in there to sort. That's a non-Chris Bangle crease, that one. 94,000 miles, it's manual. So it's got all the right bits going for it. It's a two litre, so this is a lot of fun. Think of this as a even better engineered MX-5 if you can. Manual car, serviced with a new battery, MOT, and headlight polish in March 2023, new timing chain in 2019, and seven stamps in the book. Now this is a no reserve car, guys, and I do think these Z4s are a bit of a bargain at the moment, because they're a lot of fun. As I say, German engineered alternative to an MX-5 and not huge amounts of cash. Get that door dent sorted at your body shop, have some fun with it, and when summer and spring comes around, you'll be laughing. No reserve, want to have a little cheeky bit on, I think. Bit of winter fun, that one. Right, another cost-effective convertible that you can buy in the winter. And don't forget, guys, buying convertibles in the winter is a very good idea because prices are slightly lower, and then when spring comes around, you can either enjoy it or sell it, make a tiny profit. That's good news. 98,000 miles on this, it's a 2005 SLK 200. The option you always want on these is this little fella here. This is the air scarf. If you've never experienced this, it's very clever. It actually blows hot air up the seats, believe it or not, onto your neck. And bizarrely, 
it has this amazing effect. It makes you feel a lot warmer than you are. So if you're driving with the roof down on a cold day like today, it will really make you feel quite warm. I like this very much. So it's a manual car, which is unusual on a Merc. It's got the air scarf, it's got really nice roof on it. It was driven here as well. Loads of old MOTs, had a minor service in August of this year, so that's just been done. Also had a brake overhaul, subframe repair and service in March 22. Nine stamps in the book. So really guys, that's had some love and, and been looked after. That's probably a headlight polish away for being a really super little car and it's not gonna be a lot of money. The crazy thing about these at the moment is, even in this color, which is the best, it's silver, it's what you want a Mercedes in, and, some, and slightly flat paint on the bonnet, which will polish up. So polish your bonnet, polish your headlight, you'd buy that car for between three and four thousand pounds and I struggle to think of a more reliable, stylish way to travel in the spring when that comes around. And of course, in the meantime, have your roof down, put your air scarf on, tool about in the winter. Bargain, absolute bargain that. More Mercedes, right, here we go. A CLK 320, 2003 avant-garde, no reserve, favorite thing. Sophisticated German convertible with a good service history. There's a good description. Great color, as you can see, this is the slightly marker. This is like the tungsten gray, this one. It's a bit darker than the silver. And I think this is a fabulous color, this. So V6, 13 stamps in the book. Super, super high specification because it's an avant-garde. So you've got leather, electric everything. Really classic color combination. And just really usable. The nice thing about the CLK rather than the SLK is you've got the four seats. If you've got kids looking for something with a teeny bit of practicality, that's the car. But like I say, no reserve car. It's done 152,000, so it's a bit more leggy. But it doesn't really show. If you didn't know the mileage, you wouldn't know the mileage. Put it that way. It's wearing it very, very well indeed. The paint works very nice. The interior is exceptionally nice. And for a car with that kind of mileage, the bolster wear is minimal on the driver's side, and it's almost non-existent on every other seat. So that could be the bargain of the sale. Buying a convertible car with a higher mileage with no reserve in winter, that could be a canny buy. So let's see what that one goes for. Could be a bargain. Moving on, another beautiful SL. This is a 350, a little bit more power, a little bit quicker, this one. And this is benefiting from a full respray. And may I say, if you're the person that did it, you did a very good job. It's a very nice respray, actually. You know me, I'm a bit hypercritical on paint. And uh, I would say I am struggling to fault that. A tiny, tiny bit of micro blistering there. But apart from that, that's a very nice paint job. Full respray in 2022, and I'm giving it a solid eight and a half. Four previous owners, factory hard top, and look at the interior, isn't it wonderful? It's got the Mexican hat wheels, which you always want on an SL. As I say, 76,000 mile, and it's a 350, which they really are a talky beast, a beautiful thing to drive these. 12 to 14 grand. That seems like a lot of SL for the money, doesn't it? What a pretty car that is. And so that respray is really nice, guys, I have to say. A couple of tiny, tiny imperfections which I could live with. Lot of car for not a lot of cash. SLs will never not be fashionable. They'll never not be desirable. You'll always find someone to look after it. You'll always find someone to take it off your hands, particularly if it's a nice one. And that, I would say, is a very nice one. And at 12 to 14, it doesn't have to break the bank. Jaguar XJS, if you're selling or buying a Jaguar XJS, this is where you come. We always have them. We have a variety. You can almost choose your color of Jaguar. It's because they're such good cars. 1992, four liter convertible, great engine, the four liter, really nice to look after. 66,000 miles, automatic. It says manual in our listing, but please ignore that. It is actually an automatic. Four former keepers, the current owners had it since 2015. Largely original spec. It's got the hood cover, which is in lovely condition. The hood's very nice and the color is beautiful. This is going to need a bit of a paint correction, guys. It's a little bit flat on the lacquer but the paint underneath is very good and the lacquer's okay. So give it some paint correction and have a beautiful car because it's worth it. But it's 11 to 13. And I think for five or 600 quid, because she's a big old boat, the XJS, you can have this paint looking almost concourse. Arches are nice, chrome's very good, interior's good. It won't take much to make this into an absolutely stunning car, guys. It really won't. So yeah, that will all polish up. 11 to 13,000 pounds. Yes, please. Another SLK, 230 compressor, so quick old stick. So these are the standard seats, these ones on the earlier car. No reserve. This could be an awful lot of fun, couldn't it? Great color, absolutely fabulous color. Three previous keepers, a stamp service book to 2018 with bills and invoices for work carried out since. It's done 58,000 miles, which isn't a lot, is it? And MOT is going back to 2002. 
this could be the bargain of the sale. Isn't this a nice spec? Interior is gorgeous. Seats very much reflect the low mileage as well. The leather's in lovely condition. So the colour couldn't be better for me. The wheels have been referred to a very nice standard. That's a nice car. It's level. Doesn't need much. A couple of tiny imperfections. And again, a few car wash swirls, which all cars have, guys. All cars have them. We have very, very harsh lighting deliberately to allow us to see that. But just enjoy it for what it is. Just enjoy it as a cheap, inexpensive way to enjoy the sunshine. And being a compressor, it shovels as well. So no reserve. You set the price. Where's this one? The Celica. A Toyota Celica 2001 VVTi. Now, Celicas to me, I like all of them. These are interesting. I think the styling on these was really right for the time, and I think they've aged very, very well. This looks really quite clean. Tiny little dent in the wing there. 56,000 mile manual car. It's pre facelift, which I actually prefer on these as well. Interior is very nice. Tiny bit of bolster wear and a tiny bit of stitch pulling. But it's a Toyota. It'll go on forever. It's got a long MOT and it's got the desirable rear spoiler, which really does look good on these. So that is going to be the definition of a reliable sports coupe, and that is a no reserve car. So that really won't be an awful lot of money. It's got the option wheels on as well, which look fabulous. And again, I think they're going to become quite collectible, you know, because for whatever reason, people aren't saving them. So the good ones that are left, and any fast Toyota, any sported Toyota, always ends up being good news long term. It's a bit of fun for now. And again, we keep talking about these cars that you can buy for buttons for a few thousand pounds that you can use every single day. That's very much that one. This Figaro is we know are the cutest thing ever. We know they're always good news. We know they're just a Nissan March or a Micra underneath. So the Figaro shop, they've got everything you need to keep these going. They're wonderful people and can look after them for you. This one is a 1991 as they all are. They only made them for one year. Really nice example, it's done 81,000 miles, it's automatic again as they all are. One of 6,000 manufactured in emerald green and it's just had 1,500 quid spent on it. So if you don't know the story of the Figaro, basically Nissan had this idea in the early 90s to basically create three cars that looked older than they were from their Pikes factory. They were all sold via lottery to various lucky people in Japan and quite a few of them over the years have made their way over here. So you're based basically on a one litre March turbo so relatively simple engine, shovels along quite nicely, but the idea was a car that looked like it was built in the 1950s on 1990s mechanicals, really nice, kind of retro modern before that became a thing. I think they're absolutely adorable. My youngest daughter, Poppy, this is her dream car in the world, particularly in this color. And one registered keeper in the UK. It's been stored for a lot of the last 10 years, so it's actually in quite nice condition. The thing you have to watch with these, you shouldn't worry too much about bodywork because you can get repair panels, and of course you can repair bodywork. What you have to be careful of is trim, it's really hard to get nice trim, things like the chrome bumpers, the corners, these trims, the headlights around, they're the hard bits to find. And if you're buying a Figaro, they're the bits you need to check. And these are actually very, very good on this car, and it's a very presentable little car. That will be, my friends, between five and six thousand pounds, which is about what they go for these days. Just a huge amount of fun, very practical, older looking car that drives like a new car, and a little one litre turbo automatic in town is just hilarious. Right, getting into the big Mercedes. We're going into our big Mercedes coupe section now. 2000 Mercedes CL500. The next three cars are just ultimate waft, basically. We're talking about cars that will get you and your passengers to wherever you want to be in ultimate luxury, style and comfort. This one's done 79,000 miles, which means it's not even broken in yet. Fantastic service history, two previous owners, every MOT from 2003, which is every MOT it's ever had, because it's a 2000. Fitted car cover, huge spec, and of course it's silver with grey leather. It's beautiful, basically. Absolutely beautiful car. If you haven't ever owned a CL500, you must. Nothing drives like them. This is nice, this one. They often go rusty around the sunroof. This one hasn't. What would that cost you? Five and a half to six and a half thousand pounds. Which I do not think, for what you're buying there, is a huge amount of money for what is an absolutely phenomenal car. Cannot tell you how nice these are to drive, guys. Really, just a wonderful thing. Very nice condition, almost perfect, actually. And for the year, I would say it is perfect. As I say, five and a half, six and a half thousand pounds. If you can find a nicer way to drive for six and a half grand than that, I would love to see it, because I think you'll struggle. Now, this shape, I prefer even more. This sort of squared off styling of the 99 model. Another CL500, you can see the difference between the softer curve and the more angular styling of the 90s cars. 
This one's done 94,000 miles, also automatic, of course, as they all were. Low owners, very rare, desirable, drives particularly well this one. I think these have presence with a capital P. They are just like nothing else on the road. And I think particularly these ones from the 90s, they just look good anyway. Just look at this bit here. You've got bits of the old SEC here. If you look at the old 500 SEC, you can really see that styling carries over in the back of these. But still, all that presence, all that kudos, despite what it is, eight and a half to nine and a half thousand pounds. They just are phenomenal amounts of car. However you buy your cars in terms of prestige, in terms of physical size, in terms of specification, in terms of performance, whatever you're looking for, for your pound, these have it in probably greater quantity than any other car I can think of. Then moving across to this, we're almost going through the generations here, aren't we? This is the 2009 CL500. This one's done 63,000 miles. Now this, if you didn't know your Mercedes styling, doesn't this still look incredibly modern? So this car is now 14 years old. I think with the right number plate on, this could look like it was 14 months old. Beautiful history on this, amazing factory spec. Again, probably the best color combination. It's got the upgrade wheels on it. And what a fabulous looking coupe. I mean, first of all, you can't believe Mercedes made a car this big that was a coupe rather than a saloon because they are absolutely ginormous. And let me just talk you through the services. It's got main dealer services in 2010, 11, 12, and 15, specialist services in 2016, 17, 20, 21, 23. Recent maintenance of six and a half thousand pounds all in 2023. Ridiculous. So this has had summer health check, all the wheels refurbished, it's had paint, it's had brake pads, it's had tires, all round, new blower motor, brake discs and pads, all very recently. So this car has had tens of thousands of pounds spent on it, yet the estimate is only nine and a half thousand pounds. It's a top estimate. So there you go, you could buy that car for less than the bills that have been spent on it. Moving on to the outside. But before we do that, I need to show you something very special. Don't forget in this sale on Saturday the 9th of December, if you've consigned a car or a bike, or if you're buying a car or a bike, or one of our fun lots, everybody gets put into a raffle at the end of the day, and we will draw at random one of our lucky buyers or lucky consigners and somebody's going to win this Harley completely FOC. You're going to take it home as the ultimate Christmas present. So if you're thinking of buying and you can't quite decide, let that push you over the edge. But now, onto some cars outside. Welcome outside where I've had to put my big boy coat on because it's absolutely Baltic. And here are a selection of not only great cars, but remember what I keep banging on about, great cars that you could drive every single day. If you are thinking, should I lease a car? Should I spend 350, 400 quid a month? to drive somebody else's car that I hand back in three years. Don't do that. Buy one of these, drive it every day, win at life and make new friends in the classic car world. Let's start with this 2005 Jaguar X-Type 3 litre Sport. Not many people know about this car. Not many people know that Jaguar made a four wheel drive, fun, silliness. This is a manual car, three litre, all wheel drive. It's basically an Impreza with a Jaguar badge. Manu I say manual car, 231 horsepower these were which is about what an Impreza made at the time. So that's a hilarious amount of fun. And also this particular one with just 74,000 miles on is in lovely condition. So if you want a car that will go anywhere quickly and even in the snow, great car. That is no reserve. So don't lease a car, drive that around instead. It'd be a lot more fun. This is very nice. I love an S-Type. 2.7 V6 SE automatic, 2004 this one, 102,000 miles with three former keepers, lovely leather interior with wooden trim, original book pack fully stamped to 102,000 miles and loads of bills, sales invoice when it was previously sold for 15 grand, not all that long ago. And this time you can buy this car on Saturday the 9th of December for whatever figure you like because it's no reserve and you can make it up. British racing green metallic with tan. That's gorgeous, isn't it? I like that. You know, the S-Type at the time, it's really strange, I think, the styling of the S-Type. It looked almost a bit too pastiche at the time, but it's kind of mellowing into itself, I think. And the more time goes by, I think the better the S-Type looks. That's a great car, and at no reserve, it could be a very cheap car as well. Another one, and this is a 3-litre V6 Sport, really quite quick, and it's got the factory split rims on, which are really worth a little look. Very pretty car, wonderful colour combination. Very attractive car, this. 3-litre, great with the burgundy metallic. It's got great interior trim colour. It's done 46,000. Three former keepers. Got the BBS, we spoke about that. We've also got the bigger brakes on this as well. No reserve. What would this car fetch? 
If it's not going to be a lot of money, I will certainly, for one, be putting my hand up because I think that's an incredibly attractive way to travel. Beautiful car, beautiful colour, great spec. And to be honest, you have me at split rims. All of these cars so far, guys, are going to be real bargains. I absolutely love them. We know that I love an X300. So how about this XJ6 3.2? I've got a couple of these. I've got a 300 and, and also a 308 as well. I think it's the nicest of all the Jag styling. It's the most elegant, the crispest, the most diminutive. Really nice little example. This 96,000 miles, automatic, great color combination as well. Just a lovely way to travel. You've got here an estimate of two and a half to three and a half grand, not a huge amount of money. It's a really nice color. I might be tempted to lose the arch trims. I'm not a massive fan of those on Jags, but everything else I absolutely adore. Not least of all, this lovely, if you look, if you come and have a look, Elliot, it's got the split leather velour, so you've got the best bits of leather and the best bits of velour. You can just see the driver's seat bolster is going to need a bit of love. So I'd whip that down your local trim shop, and I reckon for a couple of hundred quid, they could whack you a new panel in there. But a super way to travel. Moving on, XJ Sport, one of my favorite specifications, 3.2. This has done 113,000 miles, it's an auto. What's nice about the Sports is you get the blacked out trim. Technically, this has got the wrong wheels on and the wrong grill, because a Sport grill is normally fared in in colour. I'd be tempted to put that one back on. The leather's in very nice condition, apart from the driver's seat bolster. It's got a little bit of a hole in there. Car's done 113,000, it's got a 3.2 V8 in this one, and it's quite a decent mileage for the year, but no reserve, absolutely no reserve. You'll notice that people like Richard Hammond, Alex Kirsten of Auto Alex on YouTube. A lot of people are favouring now the 300 for its, I think, good looks. A lot of YouTubers and people of note on the internet are doing these as project cars because they're awesome, basically. I don't think anything has the presence for the pound that that has. And at no reserve, you get to choose how much it is. Moving on to this, which is a bit of fun. And when did you last see one for sale? A 480 ES. And this has done 31,000 miles. Crikey O'Reilly, isn't that awesome? 31,000 miles, really nice little car, this very pretty. It's, to me, the 480S is Volvo's unsung hero. They sold loads back in the day, but you don't see that many left. Very presentable, MOT is going all the way back to its very first one in 1990. Two sets of keys, original spec, matching good years, heated front seats, because it's a Volvo. These lovely alloys, this is pretty guys. Very, very tidy, very level car. And again, we keep talking about usable classics, don't we? Cars that you can use every day, have some fun with. What could be more practical or usable than a Volvo? Just nothing. This is two and a half to three and a half grand. So if you're looking for your first classic, something that's a bit interesting that gets you into conversations at classic car shows, but you can drive it every day, that's that, two and a half to three and a half grand. No excuse for driving just a lease box. Drive something fun like that. You can't say it's not safe. You can't say it's not practical. You can't say it's not usable. Save your money in eight lease payments. Eight lease payments would buy you that outright. Moving over here, passage gentlemen, thank you for coming. 2001 Alfa Romeo 166. I just think the styling of these is insanely nice. Two litre twin spark, so it's not even gonna cost you a lot of money to run because relatively speaking, it's a smaller engine. Isn't this a handsome car? Handsome car in a great color with a great mileage, 42,000 miles and a manual got the book pack it drives really well it's a lovely combination I can't think of the last time I saw a 166 they're getting a rare thing now and aren't they looking good what would this cost you guys what would you spend on this this would cost you between three and four thousand pounds in other words not a huge amount of money to look that good to look like a Italian company director of the early 2000s the leather is beautiful come and have a squint through the window Elliot, if you can electric seats of course it's in really nice condition, guys. This is a car that really looks like the mileage it's got in possibly my favorite color of all time for this car. It just looks great, doesn't it? Three to four grand, you can own that. And I, for one, would tip my hat to you. Now, this car, I like so much, I even had a cheeky bid on it the last time it was in the sale, and I might even do that again. I think this has got daily driver written all over it. 1999 Vauxhall Amiga, two and a half litre V6, so the smaller engine, the one they fitted in the Saab, automatic. 47,000 miles, one former keeper. It's been with the current owner since 2002. 23 main dealer stamps, 23 main dealer stamps. Top of the range elite. It's got a cam belt change at 43,000. It's only done 47,000 now. Sales brochure, it's got sunroof, heated seats, Bose sound system, just everything. 
to me, this epitomises what I keep talking about. Buy a nice 90s noughties car for not a lot of money. It's got mega history, which this has got a mega history for two, three thousand pounds and just drive it for another hundred thousand miles and beat the system. So there you go, guys. If there's anything you like in this sale, make sure you go on to manacartclassics.com. Manacart Classics? We'll do that again. We'll do, do you want to do like a, a better setup? Here we go. Do like more, more cars. There you go. It's more of a, are you ready? Are you ready? So there you go, guys. If you've seen anything you like in this video, make sure that you like, subscribe, ring that bell. And of course, if you want to buy any of them, and who can blame you, go to manaparkclassics.com. Make sure you've pre-registered to bid. And if you want to, come and join us on Saturday. The fun starts from 10.